out the, I found out about the home of blessing when uh, uh, Pastor Brian there, who's a friend of mine, he came to my barn and he said, uh, I'm, we're, a group of us are going to Thailand and Nepal and uh, or possibly Cambodia, but anyway, he said, I just, I really would like for you to go and teach. And, uh, and so I didn't know anything about the home of blessing. And whenever I got there, uh, I was moved torn all to pieces and I just I fell in love with those girls and with the ministry what was going on there uh, the attitude toward women has been going on for generations and women are what I would call third-class citizens they are, are uh, they don't have a choice they don't have uh, a say so about what goes on in their life. They're taught to to do as they're told and to not ask any questions. Uh, they're also taught to accept abuse and accept pain. And uh, they're being a woman. Uh, how well she accepts all these kinds of things and performs under all these kinds of pressure seems to make her a better woman. Uh, but they're not treated uh, with any equality whatsoever. They're, they're, they're not equal. Little girls are born in this world and if a little girl, when she's born, it's important to a father that she's pretty and that, uh, um, that she can work. And, and do the things that they want her to do. And there's places where it's important that, uh, when she's born pretty that they can sell her. You know, they, they trade them like people do dogs in America, like hunters trade hunting dogs. And, and they sell them. Then there's another situation there where the little girls, they, they don't get an education. They don't feel like the girls need an education. And because their their job in the world is to work in the rice fields and whatever farming that they have and take care of the home and have babies and and just do what they're told. They're, they're really, uh, they live a, the life of a servant, uh, a slave servant in the family. Okay, the home of blessing is about uh, ministering to all of North Thailand. It began uh, years ago, uh, Pastor Sian Kasavadi, uh, he, uh, his wife uh, grew up in the tribal village, tribal villages, and uh, she has an awesome testimony of what all God did for her. But she's always had a heart to go back and help the girls in all these villages. And, rescue these girls that were being used in sexual slavery. And so it began with like three girls sleeping on their back porch. And it grew from there to they was able to, to get a little place and begin to have uh, uh, more girls there. But they want to bring these girls out of the tribal villages where that they are uh, have been sold or uh, at risk of being sold. The girls that uh, can't go to school, their, pa their parents either don't want to send them to school or, or can't pay for them to go to school, they're at high risk because that's the ones that the thugs are looking for. They they're, they promise the parents that they'll pay them a lot of money and uh, that they'll take their girl and she'll be a nanny in their home and that they'll send her to school and take care of her and she'll get that education that her parents dreamed of and the, you know it's all a lie. The Home of Blessings ministry is about teaching these girls the love of God and about forgiveness. How to forgive the pain and suffering that they have experienced in their life. 
am to have a new life in Christ. And in learning the character of God, they learn this forgiveness and this love. And, and then these girls get to go back and minister in their village. So every time we get a little girl out of a village into our ministry at the Home of Blessing, she's getting a high school education, a college education, or a vocational school education. And, and she has a total new life, but we've also created a new missionary. And so we're seeing them uh, get married and, and lead their husband to Christ. And they, they, they have an education, they get a good job, and they go back to, the home of, uh, to their homes. And many of them go back there and live. And, and really do well and, and start ministries in their own village. And it's, it's amazing to see what happens when we uh, rescue a girl out of uh, uh, one of these villages. And it's amazing the first thing that they want to do is go back and tell their family about what God has done in their life. And then on uh, Saturdays, Sundays, time like that, they send one of the ministry trucks and, uh, and there's room for eight girls on the back and, and they have her guitar and their little things. And they go and they're doing ministry in their, in their villages. And we're seeing villages now with as many as, as uh, four, five, seven little churches in them. Go in there and pull into their village and you see the little crosses all, all around where they've got little churches all up there. And, we have villages now that are, are basically all Christian. You may have 2,500 people in the village and may have 100 who are Buddhist or not anything. The thing that we want to do is right now we have about 135 or 40 girls in the home. We don't have qualified people. It's the only reason that we don't have 220. And it is so hard to get people who are qualified to do this kind of job. So our goal is that more people are going to sign up to come from the states and maybe come and work for like two years. But uh, people that are qualified to do this kind of thing. It just can't just be somebody say, oh, I believe that'd be a great idea. I'd like to go for two years. No, it don't work just that way. It has to be people that can really do that. And the goal is reaching these young people that their lives has changed for generations to come. I mean, these young girls are ma marry these young Christian men and they, and they raise up sweet little Christian children that have sweet little uh, Christian children and it's changing the country. So we're excited about it. Thank you.